Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville making headlines a few weeks back saying Democrats are not soft on crime, they are pro-crime. Going on to say they want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Yeah, the topic of reparation joining us now is Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. And, and we've got to hit this hard, of course, because you've gotten a lot of flack from people who are saying that your comments were racist, especially during a time where Africatown is in the uh, is in the limelight here in Mobile County. Well, I'm, most people probably know me. I'm I've worked with minorities all my life, you know, I'm, and uh, I've got have a lot a lot of them have called me going that people don't really know you, Coach, and they really don't. And you know, I, I want to bring to light uh, something that people all, all all over this country are concerned about, and that's crime. We have crime everywhere, and it it is getting worse every day. And I'm not talking about petty theft. I'm talking about murders, uh, the things you see on television in terms of New York City and people being pushed in front of subways. And nobody uh, uh, thinks that they have to be held accountable for that. It had nothing to do with race, what I was talking about. I was talking about all crimes. And crime has no color, okay? And doing things for crime has no color, as you call reparation. Reparation might be a bad way to put it, but it's being paid back for something that you think that you're owed. And that's what the, the progressives in the Democratic Party, they believe that. Uh, all you have to do is ask them. They believe that, that what, you, uh, uh, what you get through crime is something that you're owed. And that's not right. We, we can't allow that to continue to happen in this country. And again, it has nothing to do with race. I mean, it's white, black, red. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah. This country has to be uh, become less lawless because we are right now. I feel bad for our police. They're underfunded. Uh, we need to support our police. And you can talk about the economy. You can talk about foreign relations, and which we do a lot. But if we don't get crime under control in this country, nothing else matters because the safety of our neighborhoods and our streets is what matters to our families. All the polls show that safety, policing, and obviously the economy as well. It was 30 years ago the, the phrase was coined, it's the economy, stupid. And now we see the Democrats really scurrying with two weeks left before the midterms to try and create some illusion that they're interested in turning things around. Yeah. You know, I'm not a politician. I'm a former football coach. And I went up there to help in a lot of areas. But I've just been amazed how we've self-destructed in the last two years in our economy. You can't run this country without fossil fuels. You can't do it. There's no possible way you can. And we're trying to do it. And because of that, we've created a, a system to where everything else, the value has gone up, the costs have gone up because we're trying to do it without fossil fuels. Our, our gas has gone up, shipping has gone up, uh, uh, anything that's made out of uh, plastic, all those items have gone up or supply chains have worsened because of that. And so it's just, it, this is a self-inflicted economy uh, made by the Biden administration. Uh, you, you can't put it any other way. You look at what's happened and the policies they put in, we've gone from an economy that was what, 2% inflation to they say eight and a half, uh, you go to the grocery store, it's a lot more than eight and a half. My, you ask my wife, I mean, she says the prices are out of sight. So uh, we've got to get back to some sense in this country of, of hard work and effort, control crime is, and those things. Not to cut you off, Senator, but how do we get there is the question because economists are saying everything <clears throat> points to we're in a recession, it's going to get worse in 2023. What can be done to turn it around? Well, the one reason that we're in this uh, recession, which we already, to me, we're in a recession, uh, and the prices are the way they are. I've been in the Senate for 20 months. We've spent $5 trillion more than our normal budget, $5 trillion. We've just thrown money in the economy and there's way more money than there are goods. And uh, to get that under control, we have to quit spending money. We cannot continue to say, okay, let's throw money at this. Now, there's some Republicans that, are, that have been voting for some of this. And I'm, I ask, why? Why are we doing that when we know that it's gonna create the problems that is created. So we, we have to cut taxes, we have to cut regulation, and we gotta quit spending money that we don't have. We're $31 trillion in debt. And folks, it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. Senator, I wanna talk about a victory you had personally in the Senate, the, uh, the life insurance for veterans. Talk about that and what that means to you and, the, and your constituents. Yeah, you know, I'm one, I guess I'm one of the few Republicans that's got a bill through a 
Democratic House, Senate, and President Biden signed it. It's about the small things in life that really matter. The small things build up to big things. The veterans need help. Uh, if you lose a loved one in the last 20 years or so, uh, you get $400,000 in life insurance that hadn't been raised. We raised it to 500000 It doesn't seem like a lot, but that, that means a lot to the people that put their life on the line for our country. And so it went through. I was proud it went through. Uh, there's some things that I haven't been able to get through, but uh, uh, again, I'm on the uh, Veterans Committee. I'm on Armed Services Committee. I love our military. I love the people that do what they do uh, because they do it for very little gain. And I want to say thank you as being a mother of an Air Force member. You were also to get past the GI education bill to transfer on. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it's so important that if you just look at our military right now, we're having such a hard time of recruiting uh, young people in our military. Uh, uh, it, the pays, you, you know, the pays not very much. Uh, you have to do it for the for you yourself, your family, your loved ones, and the country. And uh, uh, anything that we can do, uh, you know, to help our young people uh, when they get in the military, to to help them in anything that they do past age, past the military, we need to do it. We need to help them. That's something where we can spend money. Senator Tuberville, thanks so much for spending Thank some you. time with us today. Thank you. Okay.